Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. A happy new year to all of you. It seems almost custom to do an end of the year video log of some description, so I guess we'll do it right now. Some people like to bring up their New Year's resolutions, but I don't think that's going to happen in this video. <laughs> I'd love to sit down with you and say, In 2014, I will be a better person. I will do this, I will do that, and, and, and no, I probably won't. Let's be just totally honest about that. I can be a real prick sometimes. I try to minimize it as much as I can, and I like to think that what I do outweighs the prickiness of it all, but at the end of the day, I'm still a prick. I like to think that if I died and heaven was real and I landed in front of the pearly gates and St. Peter was there with a big old list, looked through his ledger and said, so what are your crimes? And I responded with, well, I'm mean on the internet sometimes, that that probably wouldn't send me down to the big burning fiery pit. But honestly, I'm just tired of saying, yeah, I'm going to try and be better. And then it's just never happening, you know, it lasts for a couple of weeks. Then I get pissed off at something and I just go back to my old ways and all right, cool. I suck as a person. Anything else? No. Cool. Okay. Great. I think the reality of it all is that some people just aren't built to deal with this whole internet fame thing, and I think I'm one of those people. But since I've got it now and it doesn't look like it's going away anytime soon, I'll uh, just try and not suck at it and hope for the best. So if you were looking for some promise that I'll be the nicest person ever in 2014, no. You're going to be disappointed, but I'd rather disappoint you here than disappoint you later after making some claim that I can't keep. Okay, I'm an asshole. Fine, let's make some more videos. So a lot of people have asked me what my plans are for 2014. That's a little bit of a surprising question because for a channel like this, i got to wonder exactly what plans you need. Like, my plan is if it ain't broke, don't fix it. If there's something that is broke, we'll look into trying to make that better. But for the moment, the channel is doing better than ever. There's nothing to really complain about views-wise. It's ridiculous. I went on holiday for a week, yeah? I took a week off for Christmas, as many people did. Spent some time with the family, spent some time with some guests and friends. It was awesome. And I came back, looked at my stats, like, oh, so I've been getting 200,000 views a day with no videos being released over the course of a week. All right, I think the channel's doing okay. Yeah, obviously, I want to get back to making content as quickly as possible because nothing worse than people thinking you're dead or have just quit YouTube or whatever. But regardless, the channel is doing really well. People have come along and said, hey, I want to watch your videos, and they keep coming back. So the best option in that situation, clearly, is to make sure that you keep making videos and then they will keep coming back. I got a very long email a few weeks back that really puzzled me. It was an email that said, I started off watching you thinking, you know, you were a good person and all this kind of stuff, and it eventually devolved into saying, well, you're just doing all of this for the money. It referred to the changes that we made to our convention coverage, where I went out and asked the viewers, what do you want from our coverage? What are the changes that we need to make in order to really keep you interested in it? And we took that feedback and we used that to create a new set of coverage guidelines that actually helped us make videos that got a lot more views. And this email went on about that and said, you know, I thought you were trying to listen to the community, but I realized that it was really just all for the money. Like, is the thing about the money, right? We don't get the money unless you like the videos. It's one in the same. Listening to the viewer base, whether it be by actually reading direct feedback or by looking at statistics that actually show us what you like and what you don't like, that makes us more money. We're not making money if you're not happy. If you stop watching the videos, we don't make any money. So whatever we do to improve the amount of money we're making also, by its very nature, has to be making you happier because we're relying simply on just getting more views. That's the way we make more money. So I'm really confused whenever I hear that argument, and it comes up like once a month at least on some forum or some long rambling email or a post on the subreddit or some big YouTube comment when we don't have them disabled. And I think, well, look, they're not mutually exclusive. These are exactly the same thing. I have to make you as a viewer base happy in order to make money. I mean, isn't that a great business model? Doesn't that sound fantastic? that I actually have to make the stuff you want to watch in order for me to get paid? That's good, right? Isn't that what you want? I, I mean, it, it's gotta be, surely. It, it can't work any other way. What, you want me to make videos that you don't like? No, no, I, I want to be as successful as possible like anyone else on the planet, and I'm gonna do that by making videos that you like, because that's the only way it can work. And this is why I don't like talking about money, right? Because people get really weird when money is brought up. 
I think there's this idealistic notion in the heads of people that the only reason that you should ever do anything is because you have this single-minded passion for it, yeah? And the only reason you're making it, the only reason you're creating it and making it as good as you possibly can is because you really believe in it and you're pouring your heart and artistic soul into it and... But it's just video games on the internet. This... This is the kind of attitude that goes into creating the Mona Lisa or whatever, not some random critique video of an indie puzzle platformer. The desire to make money and the desire to create something that you want to see online, these are things that are not mutually exclusive. You can wish to make money, and indeed, I know of no artist who doesn't want to make money and who wouldn't jump at the opportunity if they could to make money creating the things they wanted to make. That's really the dream, I think, of any creator. Get paid for the stuff you want to make instead of getting paid for the stuff that other people want you to make. If you happen to be writing articles for a magazine and they're not the articles you want, but they're the articles your editor wants and maybe there's some money on the line, that sucks because you're having to just do what you do for a paycheck. The great thing about working on YouTube is that in reality, you can make whatever you want and your success or failure hinges on that. And it's actually quite exhilarating. It's also very fulfilling. Now, that doesn't mean that if something dips below a certain number of views that it should stop being made. If I look at some of my videos, I see some videos that get amazing views and some that don't. And I'll still keep doing the ones that get less views because I enjoy them, unless I see a really good reason not to make them anymore. I think the important thing is to be able to take feedback on the existing concepts, because anything we do to change our show lineup is gonna potentially upset the people that like the original show lineup, right? So why would you make sweeping changes across the board then? It's like, we're gonna cancel this series, this series, and this series. But no, that people are still watching those. Why, why would you do that? That doesn't make any sense. So I guess that was a bit of a rambling answer to what are your plans for 2014. It's like, do the same stuff, but try and do it a bit better. For content patch, put it out when there's some worthwhile news. We pretty much abandoned the idea of doing five days a week because a lot of the shows just get boring. And it's like, why pump the videos out if the subject matter is horribly boring? The best episodes of that show, and this is especially true recently, are usually the single topic ones that end up being a really in-depth look at something. Yeah? The YouTube copyright blitz video has 291,000 views. That's one content batch. 291,000! That's insanity. Compare that to the one previous to that, which is the GOG Guarantee VGX Awards and Riot Streaming Policy Update video, which has 128,000 views. Then the one before that is the LCS Contract League, which is 244,000 views. Those are the really interesting ones to make as well. Yeah? You want to talk about passion? You want to talk about creating the stuff that you really want to make instead of just making videos for a paycheck? That's it right there. Those are the kind of videos I really like to make. Something I can get my claws into. Something that really has a lot of different facets, that doesn't have an easy answer, that can be looked at from a wide variety of different perspectives. I absolutely love that idea. Maybe I just like hearing myself talk. Maybe I love arguing with myself, but... Those videos get a lot of views, and I think that you can really use that as a vehicle for effective change. I don't want to blow my own trumpet here, but I think that the video on the LCS contract did something, or at least it helped in some way to get Riot to reverse their policy. I don't think it was the sole reason, not even close, but it was a popular piece of media that I think set up the issue quite well and informed people as to what was going on. So that helped a bit. And I think that if you take that show and you just say, right, well, we're going to shove whatever news we can into this, people are going to care an awful lot less about it. And this is evident in the early episodes of the show. When this was coming out five days a week, those shows were getting 80 to 90,000 views, and now they're sitting closer to 150 to 200,000 views when they tackle something that's interesting. <laughs> that's interesting. We don't need another gaming news show that goes out five days a week. That's abundantly clear. We already have 5,000 of them. Huge amounts of places to actually get the news. But where the show actually really shines is when we do some punditry on something that's really interesting. So I think I'm going to hold the episodes for that. So that means less content patch. It doesn't mean that it goes away, but it hopefully means better content patch. It means quality over quantity content patch. This also leaves some room to do a bit more WTF is. I wouldn't say I've been slacking off on it lately, but I think we need more of it, especially going into 2014. There was a lot of games that I missed in 2013. There's a number of different reasons for that, but 
I think that we could get back to the idea of releasing one a day-ish instead of like two to three a week. It's totally feasible for the most part to be able to set aside a good few hours of the day, sit down with the game, blast through it as quickly as we can, get that conclusion, put the video down, and then go on to the next game. That is not outside of the realms of possibility. It's not even close to outside of the realms of possibility. That is entirely practical. And it's what a lot of people come to the channel for. Keep doing that. We've got to the point where those videos can actually be a huge force for good when it comes to selling unknown titles as well. And there are so many of them popping up on Steam these days, huge amounts. And I think that we could really focus on that and actually get people interested in a variety of games outside of the norm. The only way that's going to work is if more videos come out. So more WTF is for 2014. It's not really much of a plan, is it? As I said, I don't have big plans for 2014. I just want to do more of the stuff I've already been doing. So what about Alpha Strike? Now, this show's in a little bit of a weird spot because in theory, I could do a huge amount of that. I really could. But the problem is that the early access thing is getting a bit out of hand, in my honest opinion. It's hard to even see how many early access games are currently on Steam because they have taken the front page and just completely wrecked it. There's all sorts of stuff there now because of the sale. But there's been a lot of stuff released on early access fairly recently, and a lot of it is difficult to assess as well. I mean, goddamn, the amount of these survival games that have come out is getting kind of ridiculous. So if we look at it, we've got stuff like Fortress Craft Evolved, we've got Rust, we've got Seven Days to Die, we've got Daisy, we've got Deadlinger, we've got Nether. It's like, th these are all games that do kind of the same thing. I, I know you're going to tell me Fortress Craft doesn't really do that, but yeah, it's got survival elements, there's no real question about that. And those are the kind of games that take an awful lot of digging into to find out whether or not it's even worth your time. And then they release a huge update as soon as you put the video out, which completely changes the whole thing. I mean, God, I just listed a few and there's even more than that. You've got stuff like Starbound, of course. You've got Forge Quest, Craft the World. There's so many of these bloody games. I actually don't know how to assess them. I really don't. I'm at a point where, with Alpha Strike, I'm thinking, what the hell? What should I do here? Because if I release an Alpha Strike video and then the bloody thing is completely changed a week later because that's the nature of early access, that video becomes useless. So, what is the point? All I can really do with that series is introduce you to a concept. So, I think I'm the only way I can keep doing Alpha Strike is to do shorter videos that are focused on ex explaining what the concept is and where it could go, instead of trying to critique it. Because what's the point in critiquing something that might get patched the next day and completely change everything that you just spoke about? That's happening with AAA games, not to mention early access stuff. So if we keep doing Alpha Strike, it's going to be a case of, all right, let's dive in, have a look at what it is, look at the concept, and then we'll revisit it once it comes out, but we won't focus on critique. You might say, well, critique can be useful, it will help them build their game. Yes, but really, the kind of people that should be critiquing the game are the people that play it on a regular basis. If I look at something like DayZ, for instance, if I play DayZ for a few hours and then I come up with some critique, that stuff is probably not going to be useful to anybody. Yeah? The kind of guys that should be critiquing that game are those that have put 60 to 70 hours in it. But early access is supposed to be set up to allow for that kind of feedback to happen. If it doesn't, then you're probably going to end up with a pretty bad game, but the level of feedback I can give on something like that is far, far worse than anything that can be given out by someone that's played it for 60 or 70 hours and really has that level of experience. Critique of games that have come out in their final release state is useful for a different reason than critique would be in something like an Alpha Strike video. The critique in the Alpha Strike would be aimed at the developer. The critique in the WTF is, is aimed at you. It's aimed at you, the consumer. It's a warning or it's something that says, look, these are the problems this game has, like it or lump it. Maybe you're okay with that, in which case, by all means, go and buy it. And of course, it's also about praising the title for the things that it does right. That doesn't work when it comes to early access games, because as I said, the game could be entirely different a week later. So that's what I think we'll do with Alpha Strike. We're going to do shorter videos, we'll try and do more of them, and it's just going to be an introduction to what the game is and where it could go and my hopes for it. That'll be it. We won't do any in-depth critique or anything like that because I just think it serves no practical purpose. 
Terraria and Starbound. Well, we will get back onto Starbound. We held off on it for a little while because the character wipes were coming so frequently that it seemed pointless to make any more videos. So we held back and once it's had its major update, and once we know that we can at least go for a few weeks without craziness and character wipes, then we can do a bit more of it. I think I'll probably alternate Starbound with a little bit more Terraria because I don't think we've quite finished with Terraria and people do seem to want to see more of it. But I don't want to overload the channel with that kind of stuff. So maybe we set up a schedule where we do Starbound every fortnight and where we do Terraria every other fortnight. That sounds like a sensible thing to do. And we can try and make sure that we deliver those videos once a week and get the schedule back in order. I'm okay with not having a rigid schedule on the channel for the most part because I like making what I want to make and maybe there's just a video that really has to be made at that time or that I just desire to make. So I don't want to be held down by any kind of schedule. But I do think things like Starbound and things like Terraria, the kind of crappy Let's Play stuff, that can actually be put on a schedule. And then people will know where to find it and they'll know how many episodes to expect every week. So we'll try and do that. And Terraria became horribly irregular anyway. Starbound, right? again, who the hell knows at this point. But once that's settled down, we can get that on a schedule and say, look, this is going to be your weekend watching. This is the stuff that you're going to be watching on the weekend. It's your Saturday morning cartoons. We can have Saturday be the rubbish day when we put the terrible content up. Other series. Dota 2 is pretty much retired for the moment. I am not ruling out a possible return to it. It's still a game that I like a lot. For God's sake, I gave it, what, fourth on my top 10 list of 2013? Yeah, I like the game. But playing with randoms can be a bit of a waste of time, and I try to make games that are at least entertaining for the videos, and if I don't get that, or I just lose track of my commentary, it isn't entertaining anymore. If I can get some kind of regular team, there is possibly content there, but if I do team-based content, it's going to have to be in post because doing good commentary with others, very difficult. I try to maintain a certain level of audio quality and things like that. That really can't be done with four other people that don't have the kind of setup that I do. So I wouldn't want that. I was thinking of some kind of post commentary, but I don't know. I'll think of something I just don't want to do as part of the solo queue. The other competitive commentary series that I do is, of course, Hearthstone, and I have every intention of continuing that, but I think we've come to the end of what Lord of the Legendaries can accomplish. It was a fun little mini-series, and I did say it was a mini-series, and I think I'm done with it. I'm going to go back to making Lord of the Arena, which I think is a more sustainable series. Yeah, it was fun for a little while, but it is kind of samey. On a minor point, I think that my enthusiasm for that series is somewhat diminished by the amount of backseat gaming that was going on. I think some people really want to see just straight up the best Hearthstone, and for some reason they come to me, which is the dumbest thing I can ever imagine. I am not very good at video games. I really am not. I enjoy playing them, I love the thought process in particular that goes into CCGs, but I make quite a few mistakes. And with Lord of the Legendaries, it was never supposed to be serious, but some people took it that way and said, well, why didn't you do this and you're terrible? And that, that big old really irritating phrase, this was painful to watch. Like, uh, what? Really? Like, poor gameplay is painful for you to watch? I, I, that's not something that I understand. Anyway, series has run its course. I'll go back to arenas and keep making videos like that. I don't want to make too many. I'm aiming for maybe three to four a week. I was doing it daily, and then I think it got to the point of it being somewhat oversaturated. So, a few a week. Sounds like a good idea. Finally, onto the sale box. Certainly one of the video series that gets the least views, but that's to be expected. I mean, sale box is just a buyer's guide. It's not all that special. It's something we put together fairly quickly. But... I still want to keep doing it because I think it's useful for people, even if not that many people actually watch it. What we will do, however, is stop making the sale box for these weekly Steam sales. Because as it turned out, all that those weekly sales really were, were a bunch of really bad games that hadn't sold very well in previous sales lumped together. It was a waste of everybody's time, it was fairly rare to actually find good games in those lists, so we're going to discontinue that. We'll just do sale box whenever there is a big Steam sale. Now, there is one thing that I would like to do a little bit more of in 2014, and that's videos about mods. You might remember back in November, we did a video about Brutal Doom that I just entitled in all caps, Brutal Doom. Well, that got 350,000 views, which was just insane. Like, really? It got that many? That blows my mind. That indicates to me that there is some interest in the modding scene, and it's something that we haven't really covered too much. 
and I think perhaps that's a bit of a travesty. Modding is integral to the PC experience. It's something that really only the PC can do, and there are some really high quality mods out there that we should probably be taking a look at. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'll come up with some puntastic name for it, and every now and again we'll bring a spotlight onto some really cool mods. The first one of those is going to be Star Trek Armada 3 for Sins of a Solar Empire Rebellion that I have been playing quite a bit over the last few days. So yeah, more modding videos will be coming your way. The final thing that I've been considering is a little bit more streaming. Now, many people have been heralding the apocalypse of YouTube, and that might be true for some channels. They may end up going under due to this copyright BS, and it absolutely sucks. However, I do happen to be fairly fortunate in that I'm a managed channel, so this doesn't actually affect me. I can keep doing what I'm doing without any problems, and I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing, hopefully without any problems. That said, streaming's kind of fun, and I was thinking, well, what exactly can I do that makes sense? Because aren't I cannibalizing what I'm doing already? When I stream Hearthstone, that could have been a Lord of the Arena video, and I don't really want to do both at the same time. That just seems terrible. I, I could stream every one of my Lord of the Arena playthroughs very easily and then just put it up on YouTube, but that's just... There's something about that that just doesn't feel right, you know? It's double dipping in a way that makes very little sense in cannibalizing your own content. However, I was thinking, is it possible for me to stream some of the preparation before I do my WTF is? Because I have to do that gameplay anyway. I've got to play the game for a decent amount of time before I make an assessment of it. Why don't I try and stream some of that? So that's what I've been thinking about, and I may do that. I'm not going to promise anything because streaming is not necessarily reliable, especially not for me, but it might be something that I will be trying to do in 2014, before my WTF is. So you'll get to see the earlier parts, you'll get to see, I suppose, the parts that actually caused me to reach my conclusion in the final WTF is video. There's this another weird thing that some people complain about is, oh, well, he went into this with a bias. Like, no, I didn't go into it with a bias. I went into it having played the game for like three hours or in the case of some games, like 10 plus before I actually talked about it. And by that point, I had already formed my opinion. I don't generally form my opinion during the video. So it's not coming in with a bias. It's coming in with a conclusion which is a little bit different. The gameplay that I do during WTF is, is used to demonstrate my points and also to give you guys a nice unedited chunk of the game to really get your teeth into and try and understand exactly why I'm saying the things that I'm saying. So we'll think about that. That's something I'm going to consider doing in 2014. Now, I do also have a lot of plans for the StarCraft channel and events that I want to do, but I don't want to talk about that in this video. I think I'll do that in a separate video when I'm ready to announce some stuff. But needless to say, I've got some really cool ideas for 2014 that I hope will work out very well when it comes to my StarCraft 2 coverage. So there you go, folks. There's my introduction to 2014 vlog video or something along those lines. We began 2013 with just under 900,000 subscribers. As it stands in 2014, we're about to go over 1.5 million. The channel stands at over 462 million views and appears to be gaining speed with subscribers per day up significantly from 2013 and indeed 2012. It's looking good, guys. It really is. So thank you very much for being a part of that and I hope that I can keep you informed over 2014 or at least keep you interested enough to have you bother clicking a video every once in a while. Thank you very much for your support, folks. I really hope that your New Year's was fantastic and you had a great Christmas, and I will see you next time. Does the future hold?
Justice demands retribution.
Squire, attend me. Ready, sir. Well played. 